దిస్ ఈజ్ రామలింగ ప్రసాద్ కుప్ప వెల్కమ్ టు మై ఛానల్ ఫార్ మా వర్ల్డ్ యాజ్ ఏ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ జిఎల్పి తెలుగు సిరీస్ ది సెక్షన్ టూ ఎయిటీ వన్ ది రెసిడ్యూ ఆన్ ఎగ్నిషన్ ఈజ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఇన్ వర్నాక్యులర్ తెలుగు లాంగ్వేజ్ the intent of this test is to estimate the potential heavy metals that may be present in the product the information is provided as chapter 281 in usp 2.4.14 in ep and 2.3.18 in indian pharmacopeia in all these pharmacopeias the information is same the one difference is the ep and ip it is referred as sulfated ash whereas usp it says residue on ignition technically both are same this section describes how a crucible is selected for the test you can use a silica or a porcelain crucible or a platinum crucible but it should be clean but make sure when you are using silica or porcelain crucible the inner surface should be smooth it should not be rough also make sure that you don't use any crucibles for which the edges are broken this kind of problems will not be there for platinum crucible the inner surface is very smooth for platinum crucible also another advantage is platinum crucible can be heated faster and it can be cooled faster whereas if you see the silica or porcelain crucibles it takes time for heating as well as for cooling even cleaning of platinum crucible is much easier and effective when compared to other types of crucibles another advantage of using a platinum crucible is its tear weight does not change for quite long whereas the tear weight of silica or porcelain will vary very much because of these variations there will be a significant impact on the test results because of these advantages mostly platinum crucible is used for this test this section describes the methodology the clean crucible has to be heated at 600 plus or minus 50 degrees celsius for about 30 minutes this temperature may vary from one pharmacopeia to the other then take out and then cool it in a desiccator to room temperature then take one or two grams of the product carefully in case if the monograph specifies a certain amount of material to be weighed then take that that much quantity of the material for the test then add carefully 1 ml of sulfuric acid into that heat it slowly over a slow flame or slow heat so that it becomes black totally then add another 1 ml of sulfuric acid heat it so that all the white fumes are coming out completely when once the completely the white fumes are coming out then heat at the high temperature at 600 plus minus 50 degrees till the entire material is charred completely now continue the heating of the crucible at the temperature required till the entire material is totally become ash if there is a separate temperature mentioned in the monograph do accordingly and make sure at any stage of the test there should not be any flames coming out of the crucible when once the complete ashing is done take out the crucible from the muffle furnace carefully cool it in the desiccator and weigh it calculate the sulfated ash if the ash content is not within the specifications again add 1 ml of sulfuric acid in that and heat for another half an hour and cool it again and calculate the sulfuric ash again 
if the difference between two weights is less than 0.5 milligrams then that is considered as constant weight and we assume that the test is complete. When once it is total ash is done you have to carefully put it in the desiccator cool and weigh that. This section describes about the calculation part. Calculation is very simple. It is the residue weight into 100 divided by sample weight will become the percent ash. But make sure that there is a provision to record the second weight also if required. This section prescribes some of the important precautions to be taken while carrying out the test. Use always long tongs for the test. This can avoid unnecessary heat to your hands. You should always have platinum tips at the end of the tongs. This can avoid unnecessary falling of any rust into the crucible which can impact your analytical results at the end. Use always long gloves till your elbows. It is always recommended to use cotton gloves. In some places they use asbestos gloves also, but it is not safe. Use always in a well ventilated area and make sure that there are no air currents, accessory air currents in the area where the test is being done. While calibrating the muffle furnace, it is necessary to use a thermocouple with a digital temperature meter for the required range. The muffle furnace has to be mapped to establish the locations where the temperature is maintained within 25 degrees range. That means this information should be a part of the report. The copy of the mapping report also should be available in the QC department always. This section prescribes how a general test method is drafted, the GTP. The GTP should have all the minute details of the procedure from start to finish. There should be a provision for recording weights at various stages of the test. This should include the requirement to record the second weight also to establish the constant weight. So all this information should be a part of the GTP. You can also have a references of other form copias in the GTP. I hope you understood the requirements of the USP chapter 281 for residue on ignition. The same test is referred as sulfated ash in EP or in IP. But methodology is same. So refer, refer, review your uh, procedure to your GTP and confirm that all this information is provided in your GTP. And if not, please revise your procedure carefully to include all these things. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.